So Yusuf, you made yourself at home on the Ferrari stand. Um, let's, uh, let's have a look around then, show me around. I'm one happy bunny. This is an amazing place to be. The FF. Saw it in Geneva. Oh, incredible car. V12, um, 6.2 litres, something like that. Maximum power, 486 kilowatts. An amazing car, and it can get four people in it. Practical? Would you buy one? I'd hate to say it, I'd go for a GTR. Oh, yeah, I, I probably would as well. Because, actually. again, you, you wouldn't care where you left it. You'd, yep. you'd pack stuff in. Yep. To me, it's still a, this is a Ferrari, but if I was having a Ferrari, all right, yeah. if I could have four or five, yeah, I wouldn't, then I'd add this for the shopping. I can understand but that. But I still think they've missed the mark. Somehow, a, you know, a performance estate car, with, whether it's got four-wheel drive, flappy paddles or what. I'll tell you where the market would probably be. If you had a little Desres in Chelsea, yeah. and you had parking for two cars and you love Ferraris but you needed the extra yeah. space in the back I, I guess that's the target audience yeah. I mean if you've got a garage that takes three or four cars I mean for my money I'm going to be in that little 458 over there that we're going to go and lust over in a minute either that or you could get a guy coming around with a little van and park all your stuff around yeah um, I guess 599 front engines over front there. engines so we'll do the front engines I guess yes absolutely Fiorano um, yeah as you say 599 GTB it's okay, I mean, it's more of a grand tourer. I mean, it's got loads and loads of power. You know, talk that'll pull your face off. It's certainly quick enough. But to me, I, I suppose it's a little bit heavy. Yeah, yeah, no, I see. I, the one thing that I always love about this is this styling, where, where the duster is. It's literally, it's that. It catches yes. dust. It catches dust awfully, doesn't it? It does, but then again, it's also... I, I but think it works. It's a clever design because it's actually pulling the air, it's sweeping it around the back windscreen, and that's a clever design, no matter what yeah, way you look at it. this whole teardrop of the roof and everything, we all know teardrops, aerodynamic and everything else, but it's just that, that whole thing, just... That's the one Can thing you imagine the guy like. designing it? Because I've got this view of an Italian designer saying, oh, am I going to design the window? And I go, whoop, like that. And that's his scallop around there. And I'm, I'm yeah, going to do the back little... window, I'm going to do this. And it works. It, yeah, it's a series in of this day and age when everything lines. else is done with sort of CAD and straight lines and choppy angles, it's it, yeah, it's nice to see a swoop. And, and this has all that swoopiness going on. It does work. And there are echoes that you see elsewhere on the Ferrari range with this little detail here. I noticed that on a Ferrari the other day that I'd missed well, for ages and I've been cleaning it for a fairly long time. It's the, F, the FF, actually. I did a Photoshop of it in the bread van livery and it looked fantastic. Really? You know the old bread van Ferrari? It, it just, it just, that in with the, with the bread van livery would just look sweet. And then I'd definitely have one. Um, so. Actually, if I thought I could get away with it, I'd have that for my living room table, but I think I'd wake up with a knife in my chest first thing in the morning. Well, I'm going to go around the other side. It's a thing of beauty, you must admit. And I'm going to read this. International Engine of the Year Awards 2011. Best Performance Engine 2011, the Ferrari 458 Italia V8. I'm going to ask a controversial question because a friend of mine's got a couple of Scuds and I love the Scuderia. And the one thing that, the one criticism I've got about it is the fact that they've done the intakes in black carbon fibre. And I think that Ferrari intakes should be red. It's just, it's in the DNA. Testarossa, red head. Exactly, you know, exactly. So I think. I mean, yeah, I'm Ferrari, with you on that listen, one, actually. You know, I know everyone likes dressing up carbon and stuff like this. But, yeah, but you know. red's a good colour. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. I'm just going to jump on top of this cameraman now um, and get to um, sure where you've to been it. playing. Um, so you've, you've been all over this like a rash. I love it. <laughs> it is a rash. It's grown on me. I want to take it home. I want to fold it up and put it in my pocket. Did you ever have a stage when you were a kid and you had a favourite car that you wanted to pick up? It, it was one in the box, but it just said play with me because of the yeah, shape. Yeah, it was always going to be the fastest one. You knew it was going to outperform everything else in the, in the toy box. So, yeah, yeah no, I, I see where you're coming from on that. And, and it's, you know, it's an interesting take on, on the theme. As I say, I don't, it's a little bit of a shame to lose the visibility of the engine, but you understand why they've done it. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a reason. It's sad, but there is a reason And for it's it. not, you know, you've not got that clean, because of the pivot mechanism, you've not got that clean back deck like on, on maybe the, the Audi R8 or, or the... Uh, or even the Gallardo Spider, you know. True. But it, it's, as I say, if they could sort out those speedster humps, for me, it would be right. I'd just have a little bit with that offset going on. But There's one more thing I'd love to do with it. I mean, I've, I've got this other criticism as well, because okay. going around the back... Oh, I know where you're going now. <laughs> you see, I love these three exhausts, because that reminds me very much, that's sort of like GT40 style but I feel cheated here, and there's a little bit that says, I want an extra light. Yeah, yeah. Am no, I right? I'm or? getting that, yeah. So, no, I see exactly that. It, it's sort of, 
but there again, you know, if people would see you, you know, belting away, and if you if you did have four lights in the back, they might think you were a GTR or something. So, well, I, I guess you know, that's a possibility. It's, it's nice though, but we, again, you know, it's nice that you can see style cues that were on the Enzo and things like that that are followed through into production on a later car. Great reverse camera as well down there. Absolutely, um, and, and there's a good fluidity in that design. It all seems to work together works, really well, you know, doesn't you know, it? it? Again, it's not form following function. You know, there is function there, but but it's all done in a nice design package. So um, yes, on the on the whole, would you buy one? I know you're a Lamborghini fan, but would you buy one? I've got to wait for the small Lamborghini, I tell you, but, you know, such is life. Um, not, not quite yet. There's um, one thing I'd love to do to that, being a hooligan. I mean, we were lucky enough to go and talk to Anthony Cheshire at FF Corsa earlier on in the year, and he let us play with the GT3 version of the 458. It's got the big arches and everything. I would love to see one of those with a GT3 kit on. I just think it would look drop-dead awesome. So again, like well, like the Challenge Stradale, Tr yeah. Super Trofeo Absolutely. Stradale that we saw earlier, yep. um, you know, or maybe the, the Spider Portamento, but in a 458 version. Yeah. No. Um, coupe? I like, well, I like the coupe with the black roof. You see, I, I think it works well because, it, again, it's echoing the simplicity of that design. I think it works extremely well. Is this an expensive option, this colour? I believe it is, isn't it? With it the, is. You, the you, pay, you pay an awful lot of money for that because a friend of mine who regularly buys Ferraris every year asked, I mean, I've tried to talk him into a yellow car for the last four or five years and he won't have it, you see. This is the other argument because if Ferrari should be red, I argue that can, they can be yellow because yellow's the it's Medina hometown yeah. colour, you get it on the yeah, badge. You've got the, you get the badge, it. you've got the calipers, etc, etc. Yeah. So it actually can work, can I work like, together. I like that yellow. I think that's a killer car. I really do. It's beautiful. See, now, again, I still think this looks fresh. The Cali, yes, it's, it, California is a good car. I know, you know, people are now sort of saying, you know, it's getting, it's getting longer in this tooth and everything else. But it's a great Grand Tourer in terms of, you know, you can actually, you know, go away for the weekend, not worry, south of France, whatever. Makes the right noise too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's no mistaking when you look at it, it's a Ferrari. And I think even if you look at the interior, there's People a nice... People questioned it, didn't they? They People questioned, questioned it, it but originally. I like They were the saying, detail. oh, it's not a performance car, etc. But if, if you've driven it, you know it is. Yes. I mean, I'm little, I'm very small, and I've seen the ideal car for me over there that I just want to visit briefly before we wind up. That, I think, would be, you might want to go down the shops in it, but I'm not sure I'd do a, a tramp down to the south of France. I think if you had back. one child, what, one and, child a, and a petite wife, it worked. And if you broke the child's arms and legs and rearranged them so they'd fit the seat. Uh, you know, you've then got all the other paraphernalia goes in here, because, you know, look at, the, you know, there is no, there is no leg room here. No, um, there, there isn't really leg room. you can get away with on that side. So I do think it's a, it's a... It's sort of a like like the old um, 350 GT, GT. You know, it's it's a two plus one rather than a two plus two, really, isn't it? I suppose you could sit cross-legged in the back and meditate about the speed limits, maybe. Yeah, yeah I don't know what the police would say if you're sort of kneeling up and you know not strapped in and everything else. <laughs> but again, God knows. Lovely looking back, and looks good in this pearl white again. I think the pearl's a successful colour, and again, it's departure from traditional. I mean, there's a lovely looking. Um, you're looking, you're F1 looking over longingly here. over the back there. I, so. I, I'm just sort of lusting a little bit, because I... Again, I mean, I find it hard to evoke the same amount of passion for modern race cars than I do the sort of 1960s and 1970s one, where, admittedly, F1 was a lot more dangerous, but I think, you know, you had these charismatic characters, and again, the same can be said of the cars. This is a fabulous piece of engineering, no denying it. Well, again, well, I notice you've got the, the Massa name inside, and obviously the Alonso and Massa on the outside, so I don't really know what that means, but... Well, I, I don't know, but you've, you've obviously got the Scuderia bit on the side, which is very useful from Ferrari's marketing purposes. I think it means team, doesn't it? Yes, Something uh, stable very, very as well, isn't it? Yes, absolutely, so well, it's, Ferrari it's, horses yeah. and so on. Um, but, it, again, seeing this, you know, I, you know, I'm not a passionate F1 follower. No, but, no me neither, actually. But, I mean, again, I still look <laughs> at this sort of car, those wings. I, yep. I like this fin. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But that wing is just far too narrow. You know, I know it's all about cutting the amount of downforce and making the cars safer by slowing them down. But I still am a 
F1 cars need big wide back Have you ever fins. seen Gordon McLaren's original race car at the factory down in Brooklyn? Yeah, which aero, aero car yeah, basically. They, they, yeah. yeah, they've got the two wings, the one on the front, the one on the back, and I, I think, think they forced them to take the, the, the front extreme, one yeah. off in case it chops someone's head off. It, it was extremely dangerous. But, you know, again, and then, you know, all of this detailing, which, you know, even that is an aerodynamic help just to support the mirror, you know? It's interesting to know how they arrive at the design. What what actually instigates putting that bit there? How do they come up with the idea in the first place? I mean, presumably they must have an airflow model, and they think, right, we need to break up a bit of flow here. Or there's, if you go to the factory, there's there's models of plenty, and obviously they've got their own custom design wind tunnel actually in the fact outside the factory. And they can the only complex. build at one third, can't they? They can't build. I think full so. Size. Yeah, there's models dotted around around the museum. Um, so it all, it all works that way. So, yeah, anyway, fascinating to see. It's, uh, Worth a visit, wasn't it? Yeah, indeed.